Welcome to the first Gigaspaces Zap 80 interoperability screencast. This started off as a querying screencast, showing queries of Java objects from C Sharp and vice versa, as well as demonstrating the various basic querying APIs Zap provides. However, there are a lot of moving parts in such an application, so first we'd like to see just the interoperability between Java and C Sharp. That way, the querying APIs don't get obscured by the basics of interop. The sample we're going to look at today is a very, very simple inventory application. So simple, in fact, that inventory items are represented by a part number, a description, and a count of that item. Our application also has the concept of an event, a scan event, that indicates that an item with a part number has been scanned. Let's be clear, our sample applications engineering is really, really poor for the real world. We're not even going to handle transactions or failover or anything like that. The goal here is to illustrate interoperability, not strong architecture. And because the architectural details will, will dis obscure the actual interesting stuff we're trying to show. So here are the classes in Java. You can see the item, again, a plain old you know, Java object. Um, all we have here is an ID, which it serves as a primary key, our SKU number, I guess, the description, an account of the item. Um, we then also have a scan event, which is the same thing, except we have an ID, which we actually never work with. It just serves as a, as a, a serial identifi identifier, really. And an item ID. The idea here is that if we have a gun that scans, it you know, hits a, a barcode and then generates an event from that and sends it to the centralized system. Um, most of the code here is boilerplate. All we really need is the ID, you know, our properties here, a simple constructor just to make sure that we're able to do it, and then you know, the accessors and mutators for those fields. The item has the same thing going for it. It's just really, you know, mostly boilerplate. We could have used Lombok or something like that to, uh, you know, to uh, hide most of this. Our application uh, is really just, you know, a simple inventory application. Again, this is not real world at all. We could put this in a spring, you know, a spring application and processing unit and make it all very strong. But here we're really just trying to show the moving parts as simply as we can. What we do when we run the application is we construct it, which is right here. And what we do, first we, we connect to a data grid. Then we make sure that we have three different uh, inventory items. Then we create an event container, which is basically going to receive events as they come through. And you know we're actually not defining what events go through in this code. Um, that's actually in the, uh, in the inventory event handler itself. Um, we'll show that in just a second, but our run thing, our, our actual run method, creates two events and writes them into the system and then just hangs out because we want this thread just to wait. Our actual event, inventory event handler is an event driven, it's, it receives some annotations that says, you know, whenever something comes into the system, we want to remove it from the system. It's a, basically a, a consumed topic almost if you want to think about JMS. Um, and if we actually have an event that is not available, if for some reason we get a, a notification for an event that's consumed by something else, because again, we're not actually managing transactions in this code, we want to just move right along. We don't want to actually receive an, an exception on a consumed event being notified to this particular thread. The event template basically says, with this code right here, uh, it uses query by example, and what this is saying is, we want this event handler to receive every scan event. Um, we can do multi-threading and all that other stuff, and that's part of why the ignore event on null take exists, because we're, you know, again, without transactions, there are all kinds of things that can go wrong. Our event handling itself, um, you know, it's annota this annotation tells it which uh, method to call. We could have called this anything. This is kind of neat. What it does, this signature right here says, First off, we're going to receive the event you know, that's being uh, looked for here. Second, we're going to receive a reference to the current space, uh, the current data grid. Then we're going to return an item. And what this basically does is, whenever it receives an, it receives an event, anything that this is returned is written into the space. If you look at our code here, the first thing that we do is we retrieve an item that's contained in the event. Um, we do a take, so this is destructive. This removes the event, this removes the item from the space. 
Then we make sure that we actually found an item just in case we received a, 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 an item number that doesn't exist if we had a bad barcode read or whatever. Um, so for, then we make sure that it exists. If it doesn't exist, we say, you know, look, we get received something bad. We could actually write an error back into the space or, or really anything like that. If it does exist, then what we do is we update the count. We increment it, and then we just write something here for visual feedback. Then we return the item that we re that we retrieved from the space, and this will actually write it back into the space with an update. So let's go ahead and run this thing just for just for grins. We already have some data in there, so it isn't actually going to write anything there. And you can see here that it's actually written our item back out. So we have 14 items. We've gotten two, two barcode scans. Now, this is about interoperability. So let's flip over to our Mono application. We're using Mono Develop uh, for this. What we've done here is we have a C-sharp scan event. We've called it the same thing. We could have called it anything we wanted to, but just for simplicity, we call it a scan event. Um, it does the same thing. It defines two properties, ID and item ID. Um, ID is a C-sharp property. Uh, we alias it over to ID so that the system knows that it's the same as the Java object. Um, this, we do the same thing for item ID. Up here, we're telling it use the same namespace for both items so that it can actually route everything properly. Here we have an artifact from you know the querying API demonstration that you'll see eventually. Our main class here, it does basically the same thing that the other application does. It gets a, a reference to the Gigaspace and then creates a new scan event and writes it out. Um, nothing really magical. Now the cool thing is, this will actually get consumed by that event handler we saw. Let's come over here and we see that it's timed out. So let's go ahead and rerun this. So what's happening here is just written those out. Now let's flip back over here, build this, and run it. So, and off we go running it. Now that was exciting. There's nothing really spectacular here. It just, you know, wrote something out. But let's go back over to the console over here, and you can see here that was our C-sharp event being written through. Consumed by the Java, you have a C sharp native object. You don't have a, a, a JSON representation or an XML representation or anything like that. This is a native C sharp object being written into a data grid, consumed by a pure Java application. Um, that, so you have pure interop. You could actually write a barcode scanner if it used C sharp or .NET for, for whatever you know, whatever application, whatever data source you had. You're actually consuming it sending it across in native code so you don't have a, a translation layer that you have to write being consumed by pure Java on the back end. And the cool thing is you could actually go the other way too. You could have a pure C sharp event handler consuming events that are sent from a pure Java application. Hopefully this has been interesting. Um, and you know, look out for the querying API screencast, which is also going to be very soon. Thank you.